Live from historic Fort Andros in downtown Brunswick, your way to wake up on the Midcoast. The Midcoast Morning Buzz, Richard Casimer, Jim Blykem, Radio 9, WCME. Our guest this morning is Louise Rosen. She is the executive and artistic director of the Maine Jewish Film Festival. They will be screening Broadway musicals A Jewish Legacy tonight at 6 o'clock right here at Fort Andros at the Frontier Restaurant. And for more information, you can jump on their website at mjff.org. Louise, thank you so much for coming in today. How are you? Exhausted. <laughs> I can imagine. You've been showing films, many, many Jewish films, starting on the 9th of this month, and it's going to wrap up on Sunday the 17th, at venues throughout the state from as far south as Portland, Bangor, Waterville, and right here in Brunswick. Tell me, how, how did this whole thing start, and how long have you been around? Well, I've been with the festival only since the beginning of November, but the festival has existed for 16 years. It started out in the basement of a synagogue in Portland, uh, showing films. Films on VHS cassettes, and now look at what's happened. We're uh, we're in major venues, as you say, across the state. We've had fantastic attendance this year, wonderful array of films, um, and a great response from the community. All in a state. When we met a couple weeks ago, Louise, you pointed out to me something I didn't really know, had never given any thought to. All this in a state in which. The Jewish population constitutes what percentage? One percent. One percent. So obviously our films are reaching beyond uh, the Jewish community, and, and uh, we're just seeing a great turnout from all ages, all backgrounds. It's pretty great. By the way, maybe this question is, a, is kind of a no-brainer, but maybe it isn't. What exactly constitutes, in your view, a Jewish film? I mean, I could see how that could be defined in several ways. It's a pretty broad notion. Uh, in some cases, it's a Jewish filmmaker who's making yeah. a film about something that is not uh, necessarily a specifically Jewish topic. But overall, our view is that it, it says something about the Jewish experience. And it could be about the composer Gustav Mahler. It could be the show that we've been running late night for three nights, which is a Sean Penn Francis McDormand, Judd Hirsch film, in which Sean Penn plays uh, a kind of decadent old rocker who becomes a Nazi hunter when he discovers his father's own Auschwitz experience. But obviously there's a lot going on in that film that is about music, it's about uh, contemporary American culture, it's... Anyway, we're able to cover quite a range within that, that rubric. We could be Gentiles here, no Jews involved, yet the, the topic speaks to something Jewish. Exactly. Yeah. As we say, you don't need to be Jewish, you just need to love good films. <laughs> and the subject matter just runs the gamut. Jewish soldiers in blue and gray about how many Jews fought on both sides during the Civil War right. and what a division that caused within the Jewish community. You know, and the Civil War is such a deep history here in the Midcoast area with Joshua Chamberlain and many Maine soldiers going down there. I had absolutely no idea. But then again, you know, I don't get out much anyway. Like, that's just an incredible, incredible story about Americana and American history. As you say, uh, this must be the place, the Sean Penn film, which is getting a lot of critical acclaim. Uh, one of those art films that did absolutely nothing, got no real buzz from, from Hollywood at all, but as an art film that's really snowballing now after the fact that it's been out there. Exactly. Exactly. Jewish Soldiers is actually playing today at the Maine Historical Society in Portland, and we've brought the filmmaker in, um, and he will be available both at the screening in Portland and the screening at Colby College in Waterville this evening uh, to participate in the Q&A and, and um, meet with uh, the audience. And he's obviously really thoroughly immersed in the subject. And another thing, too, is that Maine, particularly here in Brunswick, with several very predominant art organizations, Mainstay Music Theater being one, the show that you're screening tonight, Broadway Musicals, A Jewish Legacy, which actually did air on uh, public television, and I sat there and watched this thing with my mouth open. I could not believe it. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of Broadway anyway. I, full disclosure, was their marketing director for a couple of years at MSMT. But uh, just amazed at... Now, I knew about the Gershwins and Lerner and Lowe and all, and all of the great... Jewish composers, that, but where that music came from and the tradition of that and the history going back not only in the Jewish folk songs, the Jewish religion, but how much that they represent, how much the Jewish culture is 
ingrained in the American songbook that we take for granted are just is just 100% American music. It, it is amazing. And narrated by Joel Gray. It'll be screened here tonight at the Frontier Restaurant at 6 o'clock. Tell us a little bit more about that film. Well, we... <laughs> At first, we, we had a little concern. It's been on public television. Does that mean that our audience will have already seen it? And what we decided was it aired very early in the new mm. year. And besides, the experience of being able to see the film on a bigger screen with a good sound system, it's just something else altogether. So we felt that it was a great idea. We showed it yesterday for a senior audience down at USM, a free screening for 65+. Plus, and uh, we had a full house. Uh, people loved it. And I think it's one of those films, it's got footage of Barbara Streisand, Zero Mostel, David Hyde Pierce is one of the main uh, contemporary narrators in the story. I mean, these are people you can watch them over and over again. It's just fantastic. Well, it is. It is worth seeing, even if you have seen it again. You're going to watch this thing, I, I dare say, three and four times and go, what? I did not know that. Again, the importance of the Jewish culture here in America, is it cannot be overstated. It really is. It's just, just an amazing thing. Tell us about a couple of more films. We're showing tonight, um, each year we for the last number of years we've had an LGBT special mm -hmm. screening and this year our screening committee um, having shown the first film in this story which was Yossi and Yager uh, showed several years ago and now we have a follow-up story which is Yossi so we're showing them together so that for people who didn't see the first film you you get that backstory and now you've got this recently released film which again has had great critical acclaim has done very well in film festivals but this will be your only chance to see it in Maine mm -hmm. and unless it gets picked up and gets a bigger theatrical run mm -hmm. um, and uh, there will be a reception preceding the film at uh, the club quite near the Nickelodeon Cinema where the film is showing, the club called Styx. That's sponsored by the Down East Pride Alliance who have been partners with us on, on our LGBT screenings for a while. And uh, so we're expecting that with the reception and then the film's following, we're, we always have a very good turnout and uh, looking forward to that this evening. Once the festival ends on the 17th, of this month. Can people see these films again? Are they accessible? At well, any some of them, or, or? I mean, some of them are, are um, possibly available on Netflix or you might find them in uh, our local video store. Barton Greggs, for example, may have several of them. Um, some of them, we've been fortunate enough, in, for example, our opening night film, Dorfman in Love, and the film that we're showing Saturday night at uh, One Longfellow Square. Uh, Hava Nagila, those films have both just started a theatrical release and so now we're going to see them rolling out in theaters across the country but again Maine has a, a small but vibrant art house community mm. but there's so much for these programmers to be thinking about showing. I hear that Evening Star might be showing Hava Nagila later in the spring. So if you don't get to see it in, uh, on Saturday night down in uh, uh, Portland at One Longfellow Square with our big party to follow, um, you may be able to see it here at the Evening Star later in the month. Well, I'm reduced to getting my art films the old-fashioned way, illegal Internet downloads, but uh, I, I get to see Don't them. talk <laughs> about that. I get to see them anyway. Could be dangerous. It could be. It could be. Just kidding. Don't try this at home. So once again, Louise, you're here today. Louise is with the Maine Jewish Film Festival. They're screening Broadway musicals, A Jewish Legacy, at the Frontier Restaurant here in Fort Andros at 6 o'clock tonight. What else is going on in MJFF's future? Well, um, I should also mention a couple of other films we're showing sure. this afternoon besides Jewish Soldiers in Blue and Gray and In Raquel's Footsteps at the Maine Historical Society. We also have two or three, I should say, films that are showing at the Nick as a matinee special. Um, one of them is a profile of Ruth Dayan, the widow of Moshe Dayan, mm -hmm. the former Israeli defense minister, who at the age of 92 is still out there driving around, causing trouble. <laughs> She's a peace activist, and she is just unstoppable and an amazing woman. Um, we're showing a short film that was made by a local filmmaker called The Jewish Community. Uh, Rebecca Wall Pollock made this film about the community that she knows in the Portland area, lovely little profiles and vignettes. And then um, after that, we're showing um, Through the Eye of the Needle, the life of Esther Niesenthal, Krinitz. Uh, this woman was a, a, a remarkable textile artist, and she told the story of her escape from Poland through a series of amazing 
uh, embroidered needleworked panels. So you get her story and you get to see some amazing amazing craft. That really hits home here too in the Midcoast area and Maine because there are so many quilters and knitters here, women in their 80s and 90s that are still doing this with the intricate designs and the patterns that go back not only to the history of this state, but they're also, you know, the Underground Railroad and their own religion. So that's something that definitely you know, people should check that out. That's incredible. You do such great work, and people can jump on the website at mjff.org, see the whole listing of the shows and what's coming up in the near future as well. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to, to uh, seeing a good audience turn out this evening at the Frontier, and thanks for having us on. Well, my pleasure. We've been talking with Louise Rosen. She's the executive and artistic director of the Maine Jewish Film Festival. They are screening Broadway musicals at Jewish Legacy tonight at the Frontier Restaurant right here in Brunswick. Louise, thanks a lot. Come see us again. Thanks again. <laughs>